Coal-fired power stations would remain open for longer under the Coalition's ambitious nuclear power plan. Peter Dutton says he is ready to stare down scare campaigns waged against him for Labor after unveiling the costings of his plan. If the plan comes to fruition, it would make Australia a world leader on nuclear energy. However, there's no timeline on when it would bring power prices down for households. The opposition's nuclear vision generating one almighty reaction. I mean, Robert Menzies should be rolling his grave at this stuff. It's a cover-up for more coal. Modelling from Frontier Economics shows that in a best-case scenario, the Coalition's plan to add nuclear to the energy mix would cost $331 billion by 2050, a 44% reduction on Labor's approach. This will make electricity reliable, It'll make it more consistent. It'll make it cheaper for Australians. A Dutton government would set Australia on the path to having over a third of electricity come from nuclear power. Solar and wind would make up half, the rest coming from gas, hydro and battery storage. A share that large would propel Australia into the top ten countries for reliance on nuclear. You don't think Australians can, can do it? I do. I, I back the Australian people. But with taxpayers footing the bill, the Business Council warns it could scare away investors in other energy projects. That is a recipe for disinvestment in manufacturing, for manufacturing going offshore. And until its reactors are ready, the coalition would extend the lives of two-thirds of the nation's coal-fired power stations, a move that could add billions more to the overall cost. A Christmas gift, which is coal for the next 15 years. The coalition has savaged Labor for failing to deliver on its promise to cut household power bills by $275 but the opposition can't say how much its plan will bring prices down or when families will feel the difference. We'll have more to say about uh, our energy policy in relation to uh, the near term because uh, it's incredibly important that people get help now and we're determined to do that. Not even Mr Dutton is claiming that power bills will be lower under him. And in a cost of living crisis, that is what families really want. Cameron Redden, Sky News, Canberra. Joining me live is Professor Karosh Shivan from MIT's Department of Nuclear Science and Energy in Massachusetts, USA. Good evening to you, Professor, and thank you so much for joining us. So you recently visited Australia in May, and uh, I know that MIT work a lot on nuclear with Australia as well. So in your opinion, how do you see nuclear potentially working in Australia? Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so nuclear energy... Uh, provides 24-7 um, electricity as well as energy in form of uh, heat. And um, in Australia, just like any developed country, really values 24-7 uh, production of energy. And nuclear can really complement well with uh, its existing uh, resources and uh, uh, provide reliability uh, for both industry as well as um, other uses of energy in Australia. Because, as you know, there's the the debate between renewables and gas, and also uh, you know getting nuclear onto the mix and the timeline, the cost, and so much more to that. But um, in terms of AI, for example, I mean there are so many different things that we can discuss. AI, we do know that is going to require a lot of energy. What is your reaction on this and how much energy do we actually need, do you think, with AI? Yeah, in the United States alone, um, AI is currently projected to need 10% of the electricity to be produced um, in the United States. And that is a massive amount of electricity and it requires electricity that is always on night or then whether the wind is blowing or not and um, if you want to if you really care about decarbonization uh, you really can't find any other sources that um, can be dispatched in um, a many geographical location and provide this reliable electricity in a carbon-free manner and we do hear a lot about smrs and micro reactors how different is the technology compared to uh, the larger size reactors? 
Yeah, currently around the world, over 90% of the reactors are cooled by water. And uh, most of them tend to be on the larger scale, so gigawatts per unit. Uh, when you're talking about uh, SMR or small modular reactor or micro reactor, you're talking about reactors that um, are less than third of the power output of these reactors. And they come in different forms. Um, some of them are still water-cooled reactors, so they really build upon the excellent operational experience we have worldwide with water-cooled, large water-cooled reactors. Uh, but some of the smaller reactors also leverage um, uh, different coolants, different coolants that are currently um, uh, being uh, used in um, countries like Russia or China, um, or we have tested in the past. And they tend to provide different value um, proposition, but of course we have much less operational experience. And so um, costs um, uh, will typically be higher, um, but you know there's, potential for learning and uh, improvement in that sector as well. And I think we have about 30 seconds to go, but uh, I know your colleague, Jacobo Bongiorno, he uh, recently uh, put in a, a submission to the House Select Committee for the public hearing here in Parliament House for nuclear energy. And I'll just read a little bit of the, um, the quote that he wrote about. He said, let me be clear and upfront, the nuclear nuclear is currently neither the cheapest nor the fastest energy source to deploy. However, when integrated in a balanced mix with renewables and storage, nuclear actually reduces the average cost of electricity to consumers. This is primarily because nuclear reactors generate carbon-free electricity 24-7, 368, five days per year. What would you say to that comment? Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, in the U.S., when we build our, you know, about 100 reactors, when initially they were building, you know, um, they, were, they did realize um, cost overruns. But today, as they're operating and producing half of our carbon-free electricity in the U.S., they are the one of the cheapest forms of generation and one of the cheapest for carbon-free generation. So everybody loves it. People around it love it. So it's, it's a really a great long-term investment. Yeah, I guess the uh, the questions are though the the capital, and also um, as our colleague here Cam Reda mentioned the um, you know the existing coal fired power stations and the, and the maintenance for that. Um, no idea on those figures. Do you have any idea on how much it would be to maintain coal fired power stations that are ending? <laughs> uh, I, I can't comment for a coal power plant uh, in, in Australia, but in the US again, uh, just like any big capital uh, project, once you build the power plant and pay the capital cost, the remaining cost uh, is a relatively smaller compared to the original capital cost. All right. Well, this debate will be uh, going for some time, no doubt. But, uh, Professor, thank you very much for your time and expertise. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me.